Hello and welcome to The Farmer's Kitchen. Oh yeah. That's where we are. That's right. We're farmers <laughs> and this is our kitchen. That's right. Mrs. Farmer, do you notice something that smells really good in here? I do. You Fantastically made some, good. You something wonderful, that's right. We're making sausages. Look here. Look at that. Just, we did good, didn't we? look at that. Look at that. I know, I'm proud of that. I'm really proud now, of that. Now the thing is, we're going to show you how to do this. And we've made different things before. We've made brats. These are Italian sausages. You can have hot Italian sausages. You can have mild. You can have medium. These are, I know you don't like yours real hot. Yeah. So these are really mild. Thank you. But they have a little flavor. Thank you. You know what I forgot to put in that earlier? Oh, wow. Fennel It smells like seed. licorice. It does smell like licorice. This is absolutely wonderful. The one thing that TV doesn't do is bring you the smell. Mm -hmm. You see it, you see everything that goes into it, but you can't smell it. I wish you could smell our kitchen right now. You gotta make it yourself. This is something you know, a lot of people would look at and say, wow, how did you get this so uniform? How did you get this, you know, how did this happen? We're gonna show you the whole process. Now people say you don't wanna see sausage made, but yeah, you do. Yeah. We're gonna show you how to make beautiful, wonderful Italian sausage tonight. Now. We're also going to give you the recipe for brats. We're also going to give you the recipe for kielbasa. Yeah. You can do it all. Easy stuff using the same principles. Now, the first thing you're going to have to have is a grinder slash sausage maker. You know, Dad got you that years he ago. He did. And I remember that. And he brought the, he said, he said, which one do you want? Was it for Christmas? It was a Christmas gift to you. Yeah, he liked you. He thought he knew you'd enjoy that. <laughs> and you know what? We've been making stuff like this ever since. And sometimes you forget to share these things with mm -hmm. folks. I was thinking about putting these on the market, but you know what? I'll just give everybody the recipe. Okay. Because I'm Good not going to do. Good idea. And you notice we're sitting down because we've been making sausage all day. My feet hurt. That's right. Our <laughs> feet hurt. We are going to have to stand up to do some of this, but let's go ahead and talk about the process. Some of the things you're going to have to have. Now, we have our venison. From your deer. We have our beef. Mm -hmm. From our calf. And we have pork, and we know where it came from. And this is pasture-raised pork. Right. So what do you have in here? First of all, we don't have any hormones. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything that's not good. Right. No antibiotics, so on and so forth. What else are we not going to have in this? What? Pink salt. Oh, okay. Now, that immediately puts panic into some people's mind. How in the world can you have sausages and this, that, the other without nitrates? Okay. I'll tell you how you can do that. We don't want this to set in the refrigerator for 52 days. Right. When we get this out of the freezer. Good idea. That's the point. Okay. What happens when you take this meat, this fresh meat, and you put it in this sausage casing mm -hmm. and you put it in the freezer? You mm -hmm. have arrested any development of any bacteria, anything That's right. like that. So there is your storage. There is your. They didn't have that back in the mm -hmm. old days. Now, when they started using the pink salt, they did that because they would leave their stuff hanging. That's right. For days, months, they needed something to keep that bacteria down. We are not hanging this up or leaving it in the refrigerator. We get it out as we need it. If I left it in the fridge, you'd eat it all in a week. I Probably. would. You would eat all I that. Would. Would. Now, they've told us in the past that, oh, you can't eat sausage, you can't eat this, that, that. Well, yes, you can. You know where it came from, right. you know what's in it, so on and so forth. It's all good. Now, one thing you're going to have to have, and you can either use the hog casings, which are just what they look like, yeah. intestines. They're kind of stinky, aren't they? They're pretty, pretty stinky. Yeah, remember, yeah. Or you can use collagen. I like that better. Co what is collagen? It's just what's found in, in animals. It's, it's a protein that's in there. I put it skin. on my face. <laughs> exactly. It's skin. That's right. And so it's natural animal uh -huh. collagen. Edible. That particular collagen wrapper is smoked. Oh, so you got a little more bit flavor. of smoke flavor. So, how are we going to get started? All right, now, can I put these away? Put them in the freezer yes, or fridge? Yes, you can. And one thing you want to do, you want to chill them as soon as you get them done. Okay. After that point, if we wanted to, we could roll smoke on these for three or four hours. You see? Uh, that's a good idea. Right. If we know that we want to smoke half of these, we leave them in a refrigerator, we smoke right. them, and then we use those immediately. Again, I'm not into storage here. If I store them in the freezer. So don't panic. No pink salt. You don't have to use pink salt if you don't store them for 52 days. Are you going to share? I know Kelly would like Kelly's, some. You like sharing with your friends, do you? Yes. Uh, I had a buddy who said he wanted some. Chino wants some. Kelly, Kelly wants Darren some. Wants so some. I'll hook them up. That's right. I'll hook them up. All right, you ready to get started? I am ready. You know this means we're going to have to stand up here in a minute. All right, I'm ready to stand. <sighs> Deep breath. All right, now there's so many combinations of meat you could do if you want to mm -hmm. do chicken, turkey, whatever you want to do. We just happen to have this pork that we need to use up. That gives us our fat that we need. I like that right. pork in there. We have plenty, and I mean plenty, of venison, and we had a new calf taken in That's right. to get his makeover. That's right. So we have plenty of meat to use. So this is going to be a three-meat deal. I usually do 50-50 venison 
and pork, but we need to use some of this stuff up. Now we do have a bone in here we're gonna have to cut around. Okay. This is our feed screw. It goes in here and it's just that. It turns and forces the meat out. And this is our cutter. It goes directly on top of that. Blade out, sharp part of the blade out. Now we're gonna go with a coarse grade cutter here. We're gonna put this on right here. It fits into a little groove. All right, so we bought, we had this pork, but we could actually buy ground pork if someone wanted to make it easier, sure. right? So it's all, okay. I, I'm just doing this because it's a little okay. fresher, but yeah, that's, that's a great thing. If you want to buy all ground meat, it's already ground Makes up. It easier. You wouldn't have to go this route okay. if you didn't own one of these. Good point. Now we're going to screw this on here real good and tight. We even have a wrench to bring that on with. All right, so at this point, all we do is put meat into the hopper, pass it on through, take it out, and boom, mix the spices, and we're good to go. So I need these small pieces for you, then? Yes, if you'll cut those. Now remember, they have to go into this little chute right here. All right. You know, it's nice to know where your meat comes from. If you can do it in your own backyard, that's great. If not, find you a butcher that you trust and know and can find you some really, really good meat. Do you remember when we made the brats up at the cabin? I do. I'm going to give you the recipe for that, too, because that was that's, absolutely that's wonderful. That was good. This is kind of going to be an all-inclusive piece on how to make your lunch meats and your so on and so forth. We'll give you quick recipes on the thing we're not doing today, but there's so much of this stuff that you can do yourself in your own home. Don't be intimidated. That's right. You get a haircut. I like it. I like your haircut. You like it? I do. It looks Grandma nice. always the one telling me to be a hippie. Well, it's winter, so you go ahead and get it cut it's short. It's supposed to be just the opposite of that. But no, I like you to grow it long in the summer. It's a good pool. Long hair is good for the pool. But anyways, okay. Ready? Did you get a haircut? No. But it looks really nice. I just pulled it up because it's in my face. <laughs> <laughs> now let's put talking about hair and okay. get back to our pork. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. So basically we drop the pieces of meat in here, push it through the hopper, and grind it. Beautiful meat. It's wonderful, beautiful. So turn ready? it on, Mrs. Farmer. Can you push it for Yeah, thank you. And there we go. That was fun. So we simply take our pork meat and we dump that into the bowl. Now remember this when pork butts go on sale. You might look at pork butts in a whole different way now. That's right. <laughs> like, hey, that's potential sausage there. Okay, so here we're taking parts and pieces of meat that we have. These are in pound packages. Here we got some beef we had laid out. We've got some venison here. And we're going to have 10 pounds. We had five pounds of pork. We know that. And so see how the Deer meat is darker. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. So look what we've got here. All these different beautiful meats. So once you get your meat in a bowl here, and I wish you could smell all this together. Yeah. You're going to add your dry stuff and some pepper and some garlic. Some fresh pepper and fresh garlic. Now yeah. what we'll do is mix all these together and get them well mixed. And then as you're turning it over, we'll dump it all in. Okay. But here's my top secret. Okay. I like the top secret. Recipe. Three to four tablespoons of black pepper. Two to three tablespoons of salt, one teaspoon of thyme. Then I'm going to come back with one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of paprika. I'm going to go about one teaspoon on the cayenne. If I really wanted to get, really wanted to get hot on here, I'd go probably one. three. Two teaspoons of red pepper flakes. Then we need three teaspoons of dried minced onions. I like that for texture and taste. One teaspoon of rosemary. Now I crushed that. I wanted to make sure that that wasn't weren't large pieces in there. Three tablespoons of marjoram. Three quarters of a tablespoon of fennel seed. Now we're going to do the best we can to mix this all up because when we, as you're mixing that, I'm going to try to mix Pour it in. evenly throughout that. All right, Nikki, we got two more things that we're going to do here. All right. I'm going to say about three to four tablespoons of red bell pepper. That's going to give it a nice color in there and a nice taste. We got our chopper in the mail from somebody who watches our show. We don't know the brand name, it doesn't say, but we know that you can get them just about anywhere. Look on Amazon, look for Pool Chopper, they're out there everywhere. Right. So you want your peppers chopped? Peppers chopped. That feels very fine, but that's giving them a nice color, nice taste. Good? Yep. We're gonna take about 10 garlic cloves and press these into that. All right, so Mrs. Farmer, if you want to go ahead and start mixing that meat up. All right, you, you want notice these? Notice we've got all jewelry off. That's right, here's your peppers. All watches, sleeves rolled up. I get to play. That looks like fun, The Mrs. grandkids Farmer. would like this. I bet they you would think help. They would? I, Sammy would love this. Sammy might. <laughs> Be like playing in dirt. You know what, right now, when I smell the peppers and the garlic, oh, if you just only knew what this was gonna end up like. Now, as you evenly try to distribute that, I'm gonna try to 
evenly distribute as we go along. Right. A little bit of garlic. Now we've done this in a KitchenAid before, and you can do that. This is more fun. But it is more fun, and not everybody has a KitchenAid. Yeah. The last thing we're gonna add is just a little bit of liquid, and I'm gonna come back with some Pernod. Now that has a real, it's a French liqueur that has some real overtones of star anise yeah, in there, and it's that's a good really smell. wonderful. All right, now <laughs> we're gonna switch it up a bit. We're gonna set some of this stuff out of the way. Let us clean up a little bit, and we'll be right back. All right, now, since I put that on there with the wrench, I'm probably gonna take it off with the wrench. Right. That's nice, I like the wrench. wrench, I like the wrench. Not a whole lot to this. I'm gonna take a little bit of stuff apart here. This is the most coarse cutter. I'm gonna set this out of the way. Then I'm gonna pull off the blade. We don't need that anymore. Now, let's not waste any of that. We can put that right over there. Yeah. We still need that to feed. And now we're gonna take our sausage shooter, put that on there. All right, now our attachment, this is the larger one. Now, the smaller one would be for snack sticks or breakfast sausages. Which I would like. I know you like I those. I like breakfast sausage. We could do that, a little maple. That would be yum. Maple syrup. That would be yum, Papa. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, we're just gonna tighten that down, not too tight, but just where it needs to be. We're gonna take some of our collagen. And I'm gonna use probably an inch and a half of this. Go ahead and cut that. Now we're gonna take these, just put them in water. You don't have to leave them in there very long, just to loosen everything up. Now, to be honest with the hog casings, you gotta let them soak a while. And they don't smell good. <laughs> I remember they were gross. Well, they're intestines. They're, they're hog intestines. Keep that in mind. Do you know what's in hog intestines? I don't wanna know. Let's not talk about All it. All right. And again, this is animal collagen, edible. Ms. Farmer, if you'd like to just tie that off, just a simple. I'll twist it up. All right, Mrs. Farmer, ready? I'm ready if you are. take this and I'm gonna twist this and we're gonna tie this off and there's a million ways you can do this but I've found this this works well for us tie it off. look at that very beautiful. I like it. I'm proud of now, it. Now I'm thinking about smoking some of this. Okay. Smoked sausage. I want some of this for spaghetti. Some of it for spaghetti. spaghetti. Oh, there's so many applications, so many things you could do. Just throw it on the grill. Mm -hmm. But what if I told you, said, Nikki, you can't eat any more of that. What would you think? I'd be super sad. Super sad. Yeah. But on a serious note, a lot of people have been asking us online, have you heard about Alpha Gal? You ever heard of Alpha Gal? I have not. There's a situation that has arisen in the last 10 years or so. People have been noticing that if they eat red meat, any kind of red meat, they have a, an allergic reaction to that. Really? It's a tick-borne illness. Okay. Bad stuff. You can't eat red meat. Can That'd you be imagine? Bad. No, you would cry too. So, when we had our Ask Dr. Matt segment, mm -hmm. somebody had that question for Dr. Matt, so let's see what he says about the alpha gal. We're back with Dr. Matt. And this, lately, a lot of people have been asking us about this, you know, and, and I, thank goodness it hadn't happened to me. Mm -hmm. In my world, hunting and fishing, I have pulled hundreds, literally hundreds of ticks off of me. It's, it's a wonder I don't have some sort of horrible disease. But Jan Stone says, my husband was diagnosed with alpha-gal. Now that's a strange thing, sounded thing. He can only eat chicken, turkey, and fish. First of all, that just sounds bizarre. But she wants to know, is it true that it can be reversed with acupuncture? So there's a lot of questions there, but what is alpha-gal? When I first heard of it, I thought it was totally made up because it does sound pretty <laughs> so bizarre, but, um, but it's a proven disease now. It's not been around that long. We've not known about it for very long. You're right, it's caused by ticks. Um, so it's caused by an allergy to a specific carbohydrate in meat, which is galactose 1,3-alpha-galactose. So we shorten it as alpha-gal. Uh, in mammalian meat, not just any meat, and that's specifically why the foods that he can eat there. So if you're bitten by a tick, so, so say a tick bites another mammal specifically, 
and then it bites you and it has that carbohydrate from the meat in its system that then goes into your bloodstream. Your body develops antibodies to that and then when you eat mammalian meat, then you're gonna have this histamine reaction. Your body's gonna attack that carbohydrate. And normally we talk about allergies in terms of proteins. This is one of the very few allergies to a carbohydrate. Uh, so then when you eat mammalian meat, so cattle, lamb, goats, um, venison, those are mammals, you're gonna have this reaction. What, it, what is the reaction? Just like any other allergic reaction to hives. food. So hives, nausea, vomiting, headache. Wow. Potentially anaphylaxis, so your, your throat closing up, so that's the really dangerous one. And you would treat it like any other allergy with Benadryl, potentially an EpiPen if you're really allergic and worried about the anaphylaxis. So as we hear more about this, is there any hope that it can be reversed? Uh, actually, it's an interesting allergy in that um, a lot of times it fades over eight to 10 months and sometimes people can go back to eating red meat and, and mammalian meat. And it's a weird term to say mammalian meat, but that's mm -hmm. specifically what it is. It's not found in, in chicken and fish. And How bizarre. Mm -hmm. I would hate that. I would really hate that. So I would just yeah. take a bunch of Benadryl and have me a steak. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to do it. Unusual stuff. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Thanks for having me. I'm gonna split these open, put them on the grill. All right. Take your bite, see what Excellent. So good. Do you like it? You know what? It's ours. That's good. I could eat every bit of that. I know you could, but I'm thinking the best spaghetti in the whole world. Oh yeah. How do you make spaghetti out of that? Well, you can put it right in with spaghetti. You can cut it open. A lot of times oh, yeah. we'll take it out. We'll cut this open and kind of fry it a little bit. We usually have to buy them, or now we have our own. Oh, and then pop that right in. That's and so links good. like this. Delish. So good. You could eat all that, couldn't you? Mm. I'm amazed. This is, this is super good. You, you outdid yourself. Cold smoker, not mm -hmm. hot smoker. What do we want today? Temperature's about 65, 70 degrees. Yeah. We want smoke. We don't want heat. We're not cooking these. You're smoking them. We're smoking them. Now people might say, wait, you're smoking an Italian sausage? Well, this is our recipe, and we wondered how it would taste, so yeah. we've rolled smoke on them before, and this, the outcome is phenomenal. Amazing, yeah. And we did some kielbasa as well. We've done brats. Mm -hmm. We pulled those recipes up a little while ago, but look, look what we've got here. Have we got some smoke rolling, Mrs. Farmer? Oh, I think we do. Oh, wow. Let's see what we've got. We're just going to hang these up in here. Let the smoke roll for three to four hours. And that ought to be adequate for what we're trying to do here. Now, you can hang them up. You can lay them on the grate. You can do whatever you want. And I may turn them over in an hour or so. You can fashion you a smoker or get a cheap smoker. Try to get something that we can get the temperature down because you don't want to cook them here. We're right. just rolling smoke across them to get that smoke flavor. Now, back in the old days, smoke killed bacteria. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as much about the smoke flavor right. as it was killing the okay. bacteria. And guess what? The smoke ends up tasting really good. Right. You can use cherry. You can use apple. We're using a, a blend of hickory, apple, and cherry today. It smells really good. Yes, it's it going does. to be wonderful. Would you like to go see what the critters are doing? I would. We haven't seen the animals on the show for a while. We have not. Every time we go out and talk to folks, they ask about the animals. They do. So let's go visit. The girls are getting big? Yes, they are. They're pregnant, I can tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's go see the girls and boys. All right, let's look at our girls here. Look at the size of Myrtle. Now, look at the, the difference in these sheep. 
and they're all very, 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 very pregnant. Now, Dad, are they eating too much? My no, goodness. No, they're, they're very pregnant. Now, you remember we had high country in here. That's right. First class stud. That's right. And he came in here and took care of our girls. In the spring, we hope to have, in just a couple months, right. some babies. Now, we're going to keep one ram and pay attention to who he comes from. Mm -hmm. And we're probably going to rebuild our stock because these girls are getting older. Yeah. So they've only got a few years left. They're going to die of old age on the farm. Right. And we'll spoil them. But they are huge, pregnant. The girls. Look at them sitting together. Maggie and Millie. <laughs> they're good girls. They're doing the job. <laughs> That's right. Get them. Get them. And Moses is over there. Moses is over there. I don't know where Boo Boo is. But Boo Boo is about ready to go to the Humane Society to get taken care of. That's right. So whether Boo Boo's a boy or a girl, we don't want baby Boo Boo's. We'll find out though. Yeah. So the farm, the state of the farm is good. Right, it is. The girls are playing, having fun. They think it's spring, but they got a ways to go. Yeah. Kelly's little donkey, little baby donkey. Holly girl. Holly is doing well. Very spoiled. She's spoiled by, She's... by her. Yeah. Maybelle, I think we're going to give her a break this yeah. year. Let her just relax, let her chill, let her get fat. That being said, Mrs. Farmer, those recipes we had tonight, if you wanted to look those up, where would you find them? i go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. I would too, because we actually measured stuff out because right. made us. That's right. And if you want to be our Facebook friend, and we want you to be our Facebook friend, that's a very complicated process. It is. How do you do it? You hit like. Ooh, that's very difficult. Right it's there. difficult. Also, remember that this half hour flies by, so yes, as we observe, it's all about good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you next week right. in a brand new Farmer's Kitchen. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.